Hello, Emmanuel Echampon. It's a pleasure to have you here on Peter's Box. And I'm excited, I'm pumped up for this conversation because I've been following you and I know you're a student of history. And this conversation about AI is something that has been going on for a while, but a lot of people are not so much confident in certain answers you receive. But since you're an industry player, you're a software engineer, and you're also the founder of Robo Robomua. And it's quite interesting to know the perspective of industry players. So today we are going to basically discuss the, the rise of AI, the advantages, what we should expect. Is the promise worth it or we are just tickling ourselves and hoping that things go well? So just to begin, I would ask, what is AI? We've been hearing the word AI, 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 artificial intelligence. What, 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 what the hell is it? Is, is it? Yeah. Well, first of all, nice to meet you. Uh, connect again, Peter. You know, from first yeah. days to now, so it's great yeah. to be connected again. Yeah. So AI, I think it's it's a very broad field that encompasses multiple fields of study, right? So there's engineering, but there's also uh, philosophy. There's also sociology. There's also ethics about how we make machines behave in a human-like way, right? So it's a very huge, broad field uh, that encompasses multiple things about how do we make machines behave in a human-like way, right? So that's like the basic uh, definition I can give. Okay, but um, I'm more curious about the term intelligence. You know, we have artificial, okay. and now we have intelligence. What, what makes it intelligence? It, what is the best word to describe the phenomenon? Maybe you could have used artificial automation and that would have done the job. Why the word intelligence? Intelligence. So I think uh, people have a lot of definitions of intelligence, right? So like, you know, when we used to go to school, they'd be like, oh, this guy is intelligent. He's a brilla boy, blah, 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 right? Yeah. But like intelligence at its core is being able to process data to give information at a particular time, right? So there are people who are able to process visual data very fast and they're able to recall that information when it's needed. So they, maybe they pass exams, but that's one form of intelligence, but there are other forms of intelligence, right? So first of all, I want us to take that whole definition of intelligence and look at it very differently, right? So the reason we say something is artificially intelligent is because we are allowing these non-human things to process data and provide information at a particular time, right? That's all it is, right? It's not like wisdom where it's, it's just, hey, there's a bunch of data that this machine can really process very quickly and give us information at a time that we need it or want it. And that's what the intelligence aspect comes in, right? So it's less about like the way some people think of intelligence and more about, hey, processing data and delivering information at a particular time. That's all that intelligence really means. Okay. Right? Okay. Thank you. So then that means that we can consider robots, specific robots as intelligent. If they are able to deliver or process some particular data, then it means that they are intelligent. Right. Like, uh, absolutely. Right. Even if you take robots out and look at humans, right? Like we tell people who are able to pass exams because they're able to process the questions and provide answers intelligent, right? So in that less level, right, some robots are because they are able to process visual data and data surrounding them and are able to make decisions to provide that information of what to do, right? So there are robots that are able to be like, hey, this is, they're able to navigate their surroundings because they're able to process visual data to know whether they should go left or right around an obstacle. And that's like some form of intelligence, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, but when, when this all began, when the AI first emerged, was there a particular point where scientists came together and said, okay, we are going to start this AI revolution, or it has always been there with us? How, where, where do we uh, demarcate the, the boundaries of its inception? Yeah, so uh, so apologies for my dog. I have a dog and he, he barks sometimes, so please no apologize for that. But uh, in terms of like artificial intelligence, right? We know that uh, the term AI was coined in the 60s, right? In the 60s, 
But as far as humans have been able to explore how to use robots, we've always wanted to. Give me one second, okay? Give me one That's second. Fine. That's fine. So sorry about that. No worries. somewhere <laughs> no problem yeah. but the term is it was coined in the 60s right so in the 60s that's where uh like engineers were like hey well let's create a phenomenon or like a field of study called artificial intelligence and they formalized that but ever since we've had our uh, tools and machines to help us do things i think we've always wanted to have intelligent stuff right like even if you think about how we were able to domesticate dogs we didn't just want them as pets. We needed them to be intelligent pets. So we started training dogs to do certain acts, all those. Right? That's the same thing with machines, right? So if you go back and you look at Hollywood, for example, uh, if you read books like uh, Frankenstein's Monster, right? Uh, those those are all like examples of how like we wanted to make things that are inanimate, intelligent, and animated, right? So that has always been part of uh, human history, per se. But that term, artificial intelligence, was coined in the 60s. So I think the late 60s, early 70s. Okay, okay, that's great. And usually when people hear the word AI, it's this Terminator-like machine or a robotic machine. But based on the definition of artificial intelligence, then it means that our smartphones and search engines like Google are uh, artificial intelligence, right? So I wouldn't use like Google per se, because Google uses own, own, its own algorithms, like the search Google. I think now they're trying to make other things, but there've been things that have been artificial intelligence, right? Like Siri on the smartphones, uh, Samsung's Bixby. If in, I think we're gonna be uploading this video on YouTube. If you look at YouTube, right? The way YouTube is able to monitor content like you can't hire millions of people to check every single second of every single video. Right? That's a lot. Like every minute, YouTube has hundreds of thousands of minutes of videos being uploaded every single minute. And they need to check those videos for, you know, copyright content, music violations, sometimes uh, inappropriate content. And like you can't have humans, even though there are humans that help, they've built these AI algorithms that are able to process information quickly, to deliver results, right? So there's the, AI is not just limited to robots, right? So I think robots are like the peak version, right? If you think of we wanting to make a machine artificial intelligence as humans, I think we want that machine to be like us, right? But that machine doesn't necessarily have to be like us to be intelligent, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right? So yeah. the reason, I will say that the reason why a lot of people think of uh, Terminator and robots because Hollywood, since the dawn, right, they always had this fascination of making machines. So Hollywood has the, is the one that pushed that narrative, right, whether it's iRobot, or even if you look at the 50s and these black and white movies, the movies about robots taking over the world, right? So Hollywood has always had this agenda that they've pushed that is outside the actual field. But that, that is why people think of, like, Terminator. But a machine doesn't have to look like us in order to be intelligent. Okay. So can you give us some examples of everyday um, services or products that are uh, AI-powered? You've mentioned C. Yeah, of course. you mentioned C. Yeah, YouTube is one. YouTube, YouTube okay. is one. Uh, for content moderation, social media, all the media platforms are using some form of it for content moderation, right? So suggestions, uh, when you go on certain websites that have like recommender systems, right? Like Amazon.com, you're like, hey, you bought this, you might be interested in buying this and this, right? Those recommender systems are all models that have been trained on data to help people uh, get the results that they need. Right. Okay. But I what think about... people only look at the fascinating ones, right? Like the self-driving cars. Those are all cool. But like, you know, everyday life, we are, we are encountering artificial intelligence models in some way or form. Okay. So now I'm getting the picture of algorithms being yeah. used to process some data to give 
some yes. particular result. Now, yes. with that said, then it means that a, a, a basic computer is should should be considered as AI. Uh, okay, so the thing that a basic computer does is just you give it information, it gives you results, right? But what AI does is that you train it. Let's take the way a child learns how to speak, right? So if you have a kid or you have a junior sibling or you have a kid yourself, and then you're teaching them how to read, right? If you want them to, you show them the bus and you say, hey, this is a bus, right? You don't show it once, you show it multiple times that this is a bus, right, in a book, right? And then all of a sudden, the child is able to go outside and be able to point to a bus and be like, hey, this is a bus, right? Even if you don't tell that child that this particular thing is a bus. I know if that makes sense. Yeah. So the thing about AI is that because we always we give them all that information early and we train them to say, like, this is what you need to be looking out for. AI is able to predict things that they've not seen before, right? So an example is ChatGPT, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I know we might be talking about it later on, but what they've done is that they've taken a whole lot of information on the internet and they've shown those AI models what the questions are and what the answers are, questions are, answers are, questions are, so much information, right? So right now, if you ask it a question that it has never seen before, because they've seen multiple questions and answers they're able to predict what the answer should be right and that's the difference between like a chat gpt on your smart computer right like your regular computer it just it can only give you the information that you've given to it right with ai it's able to predict or create things that it has not necessarily been given but it can do that based on the previous information it has been exposed to okay so can you tell us some key advantages of of AI, some specific things that AI does. I know we've mentioned automation, but are there other benefits of, of AI that we have? So I think the biggest thing that I think everybody kind of overlooks, right, is that information has exploded, right? Like when we were young, the information that was available now, it has like, you know, exploded like there's more information now available that has ever been before in human history and that information is multiplying right and it's getting bigger and bigger right and it's humanly impossible for a person one person to be able to have access to all that knowledge and process it at a very fast rate to give up any form of right like it's it's, it's virtually impossible right like if you like the YouTube example, it's really impossible to have somebody sit down and watch every second of every video that is going to be uploaded on YouTube to flag which ones are wrong or which ones are right, right? So we need a more fast and efficient process. Uh, so it's like, hey, can the algorithm be able to identify stuff and then a human can go in and then specify to say, okay, this is wrong or right? So that's like an easy example, right? Anything that requires massive data that needs to be processed at a really, really high level, needs some version of like human assistance, uh, AI uh, models or AI assisted uh, programs, right? And I, the way I also see it is that, this is my personal view, right? The way humans were able to domesticate dogs to help us make our lives easier, right? I think that's how we should think of AI. Like we need to be able to help make machines that will help us make our lives easier right like because whether we like it or not like human life like things are, are moving so fast right like due to so many other factors like things are growing at a very rapid rate and as a human it's very very hard to you know encompass all of that we need to sleep we need to rest we have other needs that are not just uh in terms of like accomplishing work tasks so being able to have systems that are intelligence as in allows us to uh, are able to think in the way we think can help right can help yeah. we've seen that gpt as an example do helpful things help people write things right but we've seen it pass exams right letting us know that hey maybe our educational system needs a bit of improvement if a robot can just see information and pass our exams right so those are things that it's letting us know in so in my personal this is like just me thinking personally the way we're able to domesticate dogs to help our lives become better. I think we are in that phase where we are trying to domesticate machines to make our lives better. Okay. 
that's that's well noted. So it's an issue of efficiency. And I agree with you actually, because in my line of work, I do a lot with data. And there was this time that I had to compare some line of data in an Excel sheet to a free text. Yeah. So meaning that I need to pick each cell and compare the the contents of that cell to a free text. And what it means is that I need to do control find throughout. Mm -hmm. So if I have thousand line items, I need to do control find and find each and every one of them in that. But I was thinking that, hey, I can actually use my MATLAB programming to probably get a code to do that for me. So for efficiency, it will be good if I have a kind of system that um, is able to do that for me without spending so much time on each line data. And in fact, I even come to you so that you give me a, a Python code for to do that because I've been thinking about how to do it. You should and, learn Python. You should definitely learn Python. I'm a huge advocate. Huge I, 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 I will come, we'll come to that conversation. We'll come to that conversation. So now that we know of the advantages of AI, which basically is for efficiency and training the systems to be able to identify and learn um, new information or process new information, what are some of the key weaknesses that are quite pronounced of AI? Yeah, so I think uh, that, that's so... so one thing I would say is that every human invention has its flaws, right? Every human ideology has its flaws. Every human field of study has its flaws. If you look at religion, religion has certain flaws. If you look at uh, even physics, there, there are flaws in physics as well too, right? Like every human educational system has its flaws. So artificial intelligence has its flaws as well, right? Because it's a human creation. Flaws are bound uh, to happen. I think the, the biggest law is that is the lack of the unknown right like an example that i had with a conversation with one of my mentors is like when the internet was still was first created like everybody was writing things everybody was saying so many things right it's going to take away jobs it's going to do this it's going to do da 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 right so it's the same thing with artificial intelligence right like and nobody can predictively predictably like determine what is going to be or what is not going to be we have no idea. We are all just making uh, assumptions and presumptions, right? Yeah. So, but one thing that I would say is that every time there's a new technology introduced, uh, there's a lot of hype. The hype comes down. There's a lot of fear, and then it comes down eventually, right? So, again, with the internet or even electricity, whenever we create these advancements, there's a lot of hype for it. But with that hype comes a lot of fear. Uh, with AI spheres, as you know, like most of it is based on like data that they've seen, but most of it is also like data that people assume they've seen, right? So like AI is going to take over the world. It's mainly because of the, you know, the the policies that Hollywood has pushed onto us even before we were able to build these systems. But the biggest thing is that we don't know, right? Because the way it's trained, like. If you are giving a system so much information to be able to do predictions, you have no idea how it's going to predict, right? Like you have no idea what it's going to be used for, essentially, right? So that's the biggest uh, weakness, right? Because you can only assume you know what it's going to do, but you have no idea how it's going to react or how, how what people are going to be using it for. Right. That's the I think that's the biggest weakness. Uh, the other weakness, I think, is that not a lot of different groups of people are involved in the cre creation of it. So if you are creating something that you say is for the whole world, but then like people from all over the world are not part in the creation, you know, you can make certain mistakes. Right. Uh, like an example, like chat GPT, if you ask it specific Ghanaian questions, it's going to fall. It's going to fail horribly. Right. Uh, I think. Uh, right? Like, if you look at Siri, I don't think Siri can even process any Ghanaian language, right? Like, it's because they are building these things that they are taking so many different parts of the world out of the creation. And so it's like, if you're building something for the whole world and it's just a few people who are building it, you know, you're going to have a lot of blind spots. So there's a lot of blind spots in the field, right? And I think the final thing is that, oh, what is the final thing that I'll say? 
there are dangers, right? I'm not going to like, you know, there's dangers to this, right? Electricity can be dangerous. The internet can be a dangerous place, uh, you know? So that's how I see it, right? Uh, just like electricity, just like the internet, we need caution as we progress, uh, but we also need laws to make sure that things don't go away. So that's how, what I would say about that. Okay, so you've actually touched on quite a number of questions I was about to ask. You mentioned the the fear of of AI taking over our jobs, and mm -hmm. where does this apprehension come from? Because it looks like this particular generation of of AI development is is quite advanced as compared to the the move from let's say the typewriter to the computer, the keyboard. Now we're actually moving yeah. from basic processes to cognitive processes. And people yeah. are wondering what, what is going to be of us. Uh, example, I'm a blogger. And now we have yeah. bloggers who go to chat GP to generate a whole blog post. And you might not even know that this was generated by AI. So that, that yeah. fear, is is it a valid fear and how how should we overcome that fear so it it's so before i even answer that question i think what you said is true right like we are moving at a pace that has not that is unprecedented right and the reason why and i think a lot of people always take out that part the reason why ai seems so much growth now is that like the the core technology has gotten to that point like the processing power has gotten to that point the data has gotten to that point like if you knew how much data people just you know generate on twitter every second of every minute of every day you'd be blown away right like the data that we are receiving is way i don't know i i I think there's a ratio that they say like it used to double each time. It's like it's in the powers of 10 at this point, right? So like every second the data is going, and that is why the advancement of AI is moving forward, right? We have a lot more processing power now, right? I think uh, we used to say that the technology in the spaceship that took people to the moon is less than the technology in your mobile phone right now, right? So just think about that, like the power and that processor has been improved multiple times. Every year, there's a new iPhone with a better processor, right? So the processing power has is just like exploding at this point. And so the data is exploding and the processing power is exploding. That's what has made the AI advancement just skyrocket, right? So that is why. Uh, the dangers uh, the, the dangers of losing jobs, that, that's a real fear, right? Again, every time there's a new improvement, right? Like when humans moved from, I don't know, the Stone Age to the Bronze Age or from the Bronze Age to the Metal Age, whatever, like there are people who lost their jobs, right? Like moving from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age, if you're just a stone cutter and you don't learn how to, you know, uh, wield metal, you're going to lose that job, right? But newer jobs get created, right? So when the internet came, a lot of you know, retail businesses were affected, but then they were able to convert those retail businesses to online businesses, right? Social media affected some people, but then we have social media influencers, right? Like I doubt like in the 70s, anybody could have been like, I'm a social media influencer as a full-time job, right? Like some people, right? People create YouTube content as a full-time job, right? Because new technology has happened. So obviously people are going to lose jobs but that means that newer jobs are going to be created right whether it's a good thing or a bad thing i think the economics the economics and the uh the sociologists should decide on that but it is going to happen right so people are, might lose the jobs because certain skills are going to be uh made redundant but then new jobs are going to be needed right so there's definitely going to be that creation so okay. yeah and let's move a bit into your product. You are the founder of Robomua, an AI-powered software that offers beauty solutions. And your, your maiden application is a makeup kit that utilizes AI to determine the best color combinations and tones for a person's complexion. What motivated you to develop Robomua? 
So I I really wanted to get into the field of AI. I I love it. I liked math. That's a whole other conversation, right? I wanted to be in the field. And as I was thinking about uh, what kind of problems we can solve with AI, right? I wanted to think outside the box. I didn't want to build things that everybody else was building. So my co-founder, who is also in the mid space, I was like, hey, I always tried to find a huge difficulty finding the right to make up products for myself, right? Because makeup is not a one size fits all. Uh, so essentially what we did was we created a prototype to help her find the right to make up products for herself. And since it was successful, like, okay, we can apply this computer vision AI algorithm to help people find the right makeup product so that they spend less money and able to know exactly what works for them. So that's how come we transition to that, right? So that's the whole genesis of the uh, robo makeup artist or robo MUA. Okay. And how how does the AI function in RoboMua? How yeah, does so we have multiple algorithms. We have uh, computer vision algorithms them to help you find your shade for uh, foundation, skin tint, concealers, setting powder. But we also have algorithms to help you find your shade for shapewear. So if you think of uh, skims by Kim Kardashian or other forms of shapewear, you can find out. Uh, so you simply take a picture and be able to identify the undertones of your particular skin shade to recommend products that are an exact fit for you, right? So we also have... Uh, other things in the pipeline but those are things that we have our algorithm doing for our users so far all right and with robomua do do you need human intervention because if if the general idea is that ai is going to take over everything how how does human intervention come in when you are using robomua is 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 robomua going to just do everything for you or at the point you have to come in and maybe select something, how does it work? Yeah, so we are more of an assistant, right? Like we don't we do not do your makeup for you. We don't have a robot that does the makeup, all those things, right? We just give you helpful suggestions to make that process easier and faster and more convenient. Uh, but for us, mainly we help those who own the beauty brands and the makeup products. So those who are selling the makeup products, it's easier for them to inculcate our algorithms to help their users find the right products that they have made. So that it's an easier process for them. It's less about doing the makeup for the user, but helping makeup brands find uh, ways to make their users shopping experience more efficient. Okay. I was, I was just about to uh, accuse you of trying to take beauticians out of their jobs, but you just... No, we, we partner with them. We want to make sure that their jobs are easier. So we don't want to take their jobs. We want to make their jobs easier. Of course, we want to empower them to make their jobs easier. Okay, then why why didn't you rather create Robomua as a beauty manual instead? How, how why did you have to... It's a process, right? Like we're building... We are building on top of things, so eventually it's gonna get there. So we are, we are definitely, but we do work with beauty, uh, beauticians, right? So if they have the app and a user comes in and they are trying to find which products to help their users, they can just use the app, right? So it's not just like, a, hey, we are taking that process away from them, it's helping them again, empowering them to make their process easier. Okay, okay, and you majored in electrical engineering, right? I did computer science and math. So I switched from electrical at KNST to the computer science and math. Oh, okay. Okay. And you 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 are also a software engineer, correct? Yes. Okay. And what what software do you specialize in? What do you mean by specializing? So when people say software engineer, they are I'm sure there are different softwares that you can develop or just in the yeah, layman's yeah. opinion. So is there a yeah, particular yeah. software that you... Uh, so you can do front-end, back-end engineering, uh, but mostly machine learning engineering. So it's more about like building models and deploying them, but software engineering, front-end, back-end as well too. Okay. And I'm asking this because I know you're, you're a certified Python instructor. So I was just curious to know whether 
is your Python background that helped you in this AI thing? Or I, is absolutely, you... absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Python, Python helped a lot, but I do other uh, languages as well too. But like Python is a huge thing. Uh, like I teach Python on Coursera, but it's Python for machine learning, right? So it's not like general Python. The Python that I teach is mainly aimed at doing machine learning. So Python is definitely, definitely needed uh, to do this AI, to explore this AI space, if you're interested in the engineering aspects of it. Okay. So you've been using the word machine learning, machine learning. Now, one, one thing that causes apprehension when it comes to a AI is the, the, the uh, mimicry of sentience, being able to have human-like features. The AI is able to think. And there recently there was this, I think it was fake news, but it, it definitely displayed what the the general apprehension out there is about Elon Musk developing a robot wife or something like that. I don't know if you saw that on social media where you can charge the robot and it's going to be your wife. You can have sex with the robot and so on. So that, that idea of AI having sentience, is, is, doesn't it scare you? How, how do you deal with that? I, I think you have to, how do you define sentience, right? So if the way, I think we spoke about this earlier, right? Like the way we train AI models is that we show them certain amounts of data, right? And give them the answers to those data. And then eventually we, uh, the AI is able to predict uh, without being given the data, right? If you give it different sets of data, it's able to predict what the answers are going to be, right? So how do you define sentience, right? Because a lot of the things that people assume as sentience is just artificial intelligence being able to predict what the next things should be, right? So if you use chat GPT, chat GPT is predicting what, what the answers should be based on the information it, be, it has been trained on, right? If you're, let's say yeah, there's a robot, you see a video of somebody talking to a robot, it's because the robot is predicting what the, uh, words should be right in a sequence right so do you define sentience as being able to predict but the fear that i have is not for that because if you see how ai models are trained like if you see that oh it is math that is doing this the calculus that people hate is what is causing this prediction to happen it's less oh my god this is a, it's not a sentient be right it's math in application and math in motion so anybody who's in high school doing calculus and is like, how am I going to apply this AI? So all the e mass people who are hating it and don't like it, AI. But that's why my fear is not a like, a, oh my God, this is sentient, right? Because I'm like, this is just predicting what's the next sequences of what would be, right? So it could predict wrong. It could predict something bad, right? So that is the fear that we should have, that it could predict something bad, but... I, I like. I don't think there's ever going to be a robot that will be fully human. I think the human biology, the human body, the human being is way more complex than we give credit for. Right? Like we are more complex. Like you have no idea. Like the fact that a child is able to learn how to speak English or Chi or their local language, like it's insane, right? Like ChatGPT, they are spending billions every month or so just to allow to be able to predict that. And as a human being, just go sit in a class and be able to like learn stuff, right? So the notion, the fear that I have is not that like we're gonna have robots or whatever to who are exactly like humans, because it's it's I think it's close to impossible for that, because the human being is a complexity, like the way we're able to function, like our biology, our sociology, the way we're able to, it's it's insane. Like. I, it's wild, right? To replicate that in machine form is going to be extremely difficult. So that's not my fear of sentience because no matter how good the algorithm is, it's still just predicting, right? Like it's still just predicting. It's, there's something internal in humans that you can't create in a robot. But 
my fear is that it's going to predict wrong based on wrong information, right? So robots could make maybe it become algorithms can be, become racist, like algorithms can do like it can have a lot of biases and this. that's like my fear, right? But in the terms of being sentient, so it's just predictive, right? Like if you ask anybody who builds models, like this is just math, math in motion, and it's not that that's not my fear. Okay. So it's it's good that you actually mentioned the the issue of prediction versus things going wrong and looking at it from the fact that it's gone wrong based on an algorithm or based on its predictive powers. But when it does go wrong, who takes the responsibility? Well, what does the law say that's, about this? Ooh, because ooh, if, 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 if if you 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 notice when the internet came to life and data mm -hmm. became the new goal, we now had to develop uh, a, a body that will now regulate data. And if you go on any website, you 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 every website developer is actually supposed to place a privacy policy as part of their development. So when it comes to AI as well, how who do we go to to get this regulation done? If an AI model goes wrong or it causes something that we think to be in quotes immoral or evil, who who is to take the blame? That's that's a good question. I think I'm I'm going to split it in two parts. Right, the first part is like. Uh, there, sh there should be laws regarding AI, right? Any new thing with crypto, uh, the internet, right? If you look at the, the internet and when we have laws in place, right? So the internet, I don't know, it came around, I don't know, the 60s, I don't know, I don't remember. Of, uh, so like all those times, like there really weren't any laws because we didn't fully understand what the internet was. It was just like a playground, like we just play with it, right? And now people can hack stuff. So now we have cybersecurity laws. Uh, people can do uh, can scam on the internet. So we have those scamming laws, right? So we need laws uh, for AI. I think at first people were just like especially people in government, since they're not very technical, they didn't fully understand what to do with it. But I think now more conversations have been happening. And I really think the explosion of ChatGPT is what really propelled that conversation to move forward. But I think governments are starting to, figure, to try to figure out what they need to do, right? And I think that the other people who are more, more, what's it called? more uh, qualified to have that discussion than me because I'm not a legal person, but there should be laws for AI. And I think slowly there's going to come to, right? There are going to be laws for AI across continents and around the world. So definitely should be. AI. But in terms of who do you blame, that's a big, big, big question. Because if I'm a software engineer and I build the model for a company and the model makes a mistake, are you going to sue the company, the software engineer at the company, or the model itself, right? Like a legal precedent that we are still trying to figure out. But my guess is that it will come to a time where it will be very, very difficult to sue algorithms because if everybody can build an algorithm and deploy it, like who are you going to sue, right? Like you can't sue the person because the person didn't make that prediction, right? Because all the person did was show the data to the model, right? And the model made that prediction, right? So how do you do that? But I think the legal, the legal institutions are going to have to figure that part. That is going to be hard. That is going to be harder than creating like AI law, right? Like who bears the responsibility, right? Because if I train a model and I don't make that prediction and the model makes that prediction, Am I the one in charge, right? Because that's, that's something. But that that that's where the apprehension even further deepens because we are now looking at shifting responsibility and shifting safety to 
uh, a computer. So we have two extremes mm. where you're now saying that, hey, I didn't make this prediction. It was this that yeah. made the prediction. And as humans, we're always trying to, to create better systems and do things appropriately. So if the, the disadvantages outweigh the advantages, then, then it means that there has to be some sort of shutdown of this whole AI thing. And as it stands now, we've not yet gotten to that point because the, advant the advantages out outweighs the disadvantages. But hypothetically, if we should reach a stage where things are just going wrong, things are just not as we expect it to be, would you... Would you support maybe a lockdown on AI for a while, or you think something can be done? So I think it it depends on like your view of AI, right? Like I think a lot of times people only see like the predictions part, right? Like they only see things like Chat GPT, right? Like, but AI is broader than Chat GPT, being able to answer tell you something, right? Or oh, it's, it's bigger than what uh, Snapchat AI using chat GPT to answer to a cover conversation with you, right? Because I think whenever people think of like, let's shut down AI, like those are the specific examples that they're thinking of, right? But AI is broad, right? Like, so if you shut down, that means that uh, Facebook is going to have a harder time doing content moderation because anybody can post anything and it will be very hard for Facebook to manually detect who is posting something that is grievously against the law that needs to be taken that right like those are the things like youtube would have a hard time because the music labels are going to sue youtube because other people are using their music without credit or using their music illegally right so those are going to be so i think it's because applications that people are seeing right I, I, like the conversation of ai shuts down of time but instead of, you know, like the growth rate of it i i think there needs to be laws i don't think there needs to be like a shutdown this is my personal opinion my thoughts i could change at any moment but right like every technology is dangerous on some aspect right the internet is a dangerous dangerous place. if you think critically about it the internet is horribly dangerous there are laws that like there are studies that show the effect of the internet on teenagers' mental health, right? So does that mean we need to shut down the internet, right? Like, so we need laws, that I do agree. We need strict laws, I do agree. We need to take precautions as we are doing these things, I do agree. Uh, but for a shutdown, I, again, using this internet as a dangerous place, and, you know, that does that mean we need to shut down the internet? Like, you know, that is my uh, idea. And... Yeah, the field of AI is bigger than ChatGPT, and I need a lot of people to fully understand that, right? Because if you only think ChatGPT is the only AI, or like the whole like interaction with the model is the only forms of AI that is available, then it's not very. I think we need to expand beyond that. But shutdown, I think it's we need laws though, we need strict laws, or we need to move with caution. But shutting down, it's a Technology. I think it's not something that is very helpful. Okay, so I know you are you are an enthusiastic student of history, and you usually like to compare eras and generations with one another. I, I want to know: yes. Have you thought about the the impact of AI or some correlation in the distant past? with the the rise or emergence of ai now because you usually pinpoint to certain things that happen in history and say we should learn from this this is exactly what's happening now so with ai have you had that um conversation in your mind yeah yeah absolutely i i that's great 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 thought right i i think when we think of history think of like the further past i think Right. The biggest, like, I'm not competitive, but like the biggest similarity to recent history of artificial intelligence. 
I think we all, a lot of people like now everybody gets data. So they're able to go online and like, they think it's like, it's easy. Like, it's like, oh, you open this website, you do, but no, like we can literally do everything on the internet. Like we can watch movies. We can like, I, I don't think people, like people take for granted that you can take a picture and post it on social media. Like, 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 you to be able to scroll in a thread. That's right. Like that is not something that used to exist, right? Like if you want to read a book, it's on the internet. There's a PDF version of that book, right? Like that, that is super insane, right? But also the internet has been used to commit crimes, like, and it's still being used to commit crimes, right? Like it's used to do ridiculously horrible things as well too right so i think like i've been saying all along that the comparisons between the internet and artificial intelligence is very very similar uh because again now everybody has access to the internet like every most remote parts of the world now have access to the internet like that is how the closest comparison to artificial intelligence is and that is why we need cautions was to make sure like you know we don't get like a dark web of AI. Like we don't have a dark AI coming up like we had with the internet, right? Like we don't get like. Okay. If we can and AI safer, I think that would be the best option. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. It's it's been a wonderful discussion. I've learned quite a lot, and I I would just want to know what you have for your fellow Ghanaians. I'm, I'm putting you in the, in the position of our president who always uses that term, fellow Ghanaians. What, what, what would be your encouragement to us? Because sometimes it, it looks as though this is a, a, a Western concept, it's a Western philosophy. It, 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 it doesn't have anything to do with, with Africa or let's say developing countries, but I was quite impressed when I watched this open debate and I think it's a it's in Doha and there was this data scientist from Kenya who is actually using AI to help track certain health issues and it's it's amazing when I actually listened to it, I was like wow so AI can actually be used for this and she's actually um, teaching other people how to also use it. So when, when it comes to our part of the world, um, what would be your your word of advice or encouragement for someone who feels like, oh, I, I want to do something important? And usually you find this in our young kids who will be designing 10 cans and a whole lot of things to just to mimic what they, what they see. What, what would be your word of advice for some of these people? Um, so my advice would be um secure and PDD. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> my yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing I, you said that uh, uh right, like there's a lot of Ghanaians in the AI space, right? Like I think uh, when we were growing up, we had limited views of what we could be but thankfully now there's so many people who've broken barriers to show that we could be right like i know but i personally know Ghanaians who are doing this ai film in ghana who are doing amazing right so build this for us right it is just a tool technology is just a tool and all we need to do is to tap into that tool and leverage it to solve our own problem right so if you're young Ghanaian, there are so many Ghanaians and so many people of african origin who are doing amazing things in the ai space uh look up to them like look connect with them and see what they're doing and see hey how can i leverage what they've done to build and solve problems i see in my own surroundings or in my own communities right so there's that, that like and also there's a community that you should like communities like you do it on your own, it's going to be very, very difficult. So plug yourself into one of those communities. 
I know most of them are in Accra, but there are a few in Kumasi, and I've I've seen a couple in Takrad and Sunyani as well too. So if uh, plug yourself into a community or find a Ghanaian who's doing this space and like you know connect with them, see how they got to where they got to, and how you can leverage what they know to help you build solutions to your own uh, problem. So that's what I would say. Okay, thank you so much. And as we wrap up, I'm back to my Python code. I, I want to put you on the spot. How do I compare a cell in Excel to some free text somewhere, let's say on, on a website? I'm comparing that data to something on the website. What kind of code, um, a pseudo code? You can just give me the correlation how to do that. I think I need code. I think to find build a web tool for text on compare. Yeah, find a tool. Just use online tools. Essentially, load a sheet as a data as a CV. Right, and then you can just uh, use pandas to parse through each cell and compare it to the text that you're looking at. So you load uh, the text you need as a file, and then you load the Excel sheet as a CSV, right? And then you iterate through the CSV and then compare that to each section that you needed to compare it with in the file. So you can either do pandas uh, with that, but I think online you're gonna find somebody who's done a tool for that. But, okay. Yeah, okay. you can Google Pandas how to do that. Yeah, it's a basic. Convert your Excel sheet to a CSV file. Then you can use a data frame to compare which cells you want to compare it to the particular text. But yeah, you can find it online. You can find it. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you so much. This discussion has been quite interesting and eye opening, especially when you mentioned the issue of prediction versus responsibility. It's, it's something that I did really um, think about, but I think you've made a good point over there. And I also hope that you've calmed the fears of many of us who think AI is there to to eat us and, and finish us off. And hope, hopefully we would, we would see better things happening. And I think this whole conversation actually ties into transhumanism, where which is a concept of humans becoming better, living better through technology. And if if AI is actually on, on, on a good path, then it means that we are basically going to become transhuman some sometime in, in the future. I don't know if that's also a Hollywood mentality that I have, but Probably that is where you might you might head, and we are we are evolving. We've we've evolved ever since, and we are still evolving. So, I I think we shouldn't be scared of of this evolution that that is going to happen. You just have to know how best you could you could evolve. If not, then it means that you're going to go extinct. And speaking of evolution, and we touched on a bit of history. Um, we would have other sessions. I would love to hear your thoughts on some other philosophical ideas and certain things in history. I think we we, we did a similar thing on, on one of your posts where I had to talk about the language and transliteration thing. And yeah. hopefully we'll have more conversations on this, but I've, I really enjoyed this conversation. It's been so good. And thank you for your time. And I don't know if you have any final words for, for us before we call it a day. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. This was a dope conversation. I think my final words is EMAS important. The you know the you don't have to get an A but you know the calculus that we think is ridiculous and the thing that you, I don't know we used to say oh we are never going to apply this thing anywhere in life that's a lie right that's a lie a huge lie so if you are doing e maths in high school this is for all your high school students and you are thinking oh, this is boring this is not doing anything for me AI just think that e maths you're going to use it for AI one day so 
yeah, that's like the final verse. <laughs> but thank you so much for this conversation. Thank I'd love to have you. historical conversations too. So let me know. Definitely, we would. We would. We would. We would. Thank you so much. And oh, Definitely you, well. I didn't ask you to drop your your handles. And if you have a website for your for your Robomoa, you can mention it. I would put it up on our screen. Yeah. yeah. So Robomoa.com. I'll, 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 Robomoa.com, okay. Yes. Okay. And you can and also on, see us on Instagram, RoboMUA, the same handle, right? On Twitter, Robo, R-O-B-O underscore M-U-A. Uh, on LinkedIn, it's RoboMUA, Robo Makeup Artist as well too, so. Okay. And what what about the, the app? Is it available on iOS? Yes. The app is available on iOS and Android, uh, Robo MUA, R O B O M U A. Uh, download it. Uh, please send me your feedback if you have any. I'd love to hear from you as well, too. Okay. Thank you. And with that, have a beautiful day. We'll definitely talk beautiful again. Well. Thank you so much, Iman. Awesome. Awesome. Thank All you right. so much for your time, too. Cool. <laughs>